Hi everyone, Aisha from Retro Handhelds, and today we're going to be talking about Garlic OS, the brand new custom firmware for the RG35XX from Black Seraph. Before we get into that video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you want to stay up to date with everything that's going on, including updates to Garlic OS and everything happening in the community, go ahead and follow our social medias, they're going to be linked down below. So originally this video was just going to be about RetroArch and a couple of the updates, but before I was able to get to that, Black Seraph actually went ahead and put out Garlic OS, a full-on OS for the RG35XX, and not only did he put it out, he even updated it twice, I believe, up to this point. So a lot of work has been going on and it's working great. Now, a couple of things we're going to cover in this video is how to install it, either how to get it onto your stock card or how to flash a brand new card and get it onto your system and just kind of give you an idea of where everything is, hotkeys, how it performs, all of that. Now, keep in mind, this is a free download. So you just have to go on this Patreon, download the files and have them ready in your computer because we're actually going to go over there right now. So once we have our files, we're going to go ahead and unzip them. And yes, I'm using WinRAR. No, I'm not going to change it. Leave me alone. I like this one. Anyway. These are a free download from the Black Stars Patreon, but if you do want to support it, go ahead and sign up for a month. Once everything's extracted, we're going to get rid of those files that we're not going to need anymore. And here is what we are going to be needing. So the first thing we're going to have here is our text file. Those are just the instructions on how to drag and drop the files, but we're going to cover it here in this video. Still, though, keep this around. It could be handy. There are some other instructions that I'm not going to cover here that are there, so don't get rid of that one. Next up is our image file. That's the one we're going to flash onto our SD card. And to do that, we're going to be using a Lena Etcher. So we're going to open that up. You're going to find the flash image. Which is right there, garlic. And then you have to find the appropriate drive. Once you find the correct one, you have everything set up. Go ahead and run it and let it do its thing. Once it's done, it's actually going to go verify the flash and then it's going to boot the SD card. So you are going to have to take it out and put it back in to go to the next step. Okay, and once we have that done and you put the SD card back in, you're going to get two pop-ups right here. Here's a folder where you're going to have all your ROMs. They're already in there in the correct names, so don't change that. What you are going to do right now is cut these and put them somewhere else because we're going to need them in a little bit. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead and open up Disk Manager and we're going to find our SD card. So. Down here, you're going to notice that our ROMs partition is only 3.16 gigabytes and there's a whole 26 gigabytes unused. So what we need to do is use that space for our ROMs. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to delete this volume. Just. And now the remaining space, we're going to go ahead and uh, create a new volume. So just go through the next, 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 give it a letter and it should be now it should be visible to your pc now on that drive is where we're going to actually go ahead and take the folders that we cut earlier and paste them in there so this is going to be our new ROS partition this way we can use all of the room in the sd card and we still keep all the files in there all the custom firmware everything because there are some stuff in here that we're going to need so this is going to take a couple seconds to load up but once you do that roms partition is going to be ready to use And here you go. Now, now this is where all your games are going to go, but this is also where your custom firmware folder is. And then that is where the retrocharge system configuration is. And that's where we actually need to go to drop in our BIOS files. So we're going to go over there, open that up. Custom firmware, CFW. Now, once in there, you're going to go retrocharge. Go down where it says system and go ahead and right there that's where you're going to drop your bios files now you're on your own as to where to get those uh same thing with roms we're not going to cover that in this video that's just not something we can share with you guys so sorry about that but yeah you're on your own on that one and that's actually it for the brand new sd card now if you did want to use your stock card and you just want to drag and drop those files in there what you're going to do is insert that SD card. You're going to get a few pop-ups and you are going to get those extra ones that I was talking about. Go ahead and cancel. Do not format anything. Just close those. 
and you're going to have two folders that you extracted earlier. One is going to say misc and one is going to be roms. You're going to go ahead and open up. First, we're going to do the misc. And you're going to go ahead and open that up. Go ahead and take everything that's in that misc folder and drag it into your misc partition on your SD card. Once that's done, you're going to do the exact same thing with the ROMs one. You're going to take that custom firmware and throw it in there. And that's it. Once everything's in that SD card, you're ready to go. Just go ahead and eject it and throw it back into your 35XX. Okay, so now that we're back to the device, the very first thing we have to do is go ahead and boot it on. There we go. We got garlic OS. That's going to be our boot screen and just give it a couple seconds. There we go. We're into the OS. So this is what it's going to look like. These are the options you have. So a couple things here is going to be recent. This is going to show your recent games that you've been playing. Favorites. If you have any games that you want to keep handy, you want very fast access to, that's where you're going to find them. We're going to have our consoles. So right here, whatever systems you installed ROMs for on the card, they're going to show up right here and it's going to auto populate so you don't have to do anything you don't have to create playlists none of that it's all going to be right here now let's say you want to go through some of these games and you have a whole bunch of them what you can do is actually press r1 to go faster or l1 to go back faster or just use the d-pad to go a little bit slower so this makes uh, going through the menus through all your games a little bit faster which is a nice little addition if you have one that you know you're going to want to be playing a lot then you can just go ahead and favorite by pressing y and when you go back to your favorites, it's going to be right there. And the last thing here is going to be RetroArch. So going here is going to launch RetroArch. And that's actually where we're going to go in and adjust settings. At least the settings that we might need to adjust. There's not a whole lot you're going to have to do because pretty much everything has already been pre-configured for you. Now, before we do get into those settings though, let's talk about some of the hotkeys and some of the features here. So we're going to go to consoles and we're just going to launch a game. There you go. So right here one of the cool things about this one and something that uh, is inspired by the Mia mini is if you just press menu it's going to take you right back to your games if you go to recent all your games are going to be right here so let's say you want to switch through games got okay, final fantasy 6 that's loading and i want a different game so let's go recent super mario rpg that'll boot up let's go back to advanced wars so this button right here is going to act a lot like the game switcher on the Mega Mini, which is very nice. If you just want to be able to go through your games pretty quickly, that's going to be a great way to do it. Now we've covered where your games are at, how to switch back and forth between your games. What about once you're in game? What are our hotkeys? Now, if you do a quick press here, it's going to take you out of the game. But this also acts as our hotkey enabler. Turn the volume down. If we hold it down, and we press X, that's going to take us into our red torch menu. If we hold it down and press R1, that's going to speed up. And you don't have to keep it down. You can just let go if you want to keep that frame throttle going. But if you want to slow it down, press L1. Back to normal. And now if I press this and I press... Um, L2, I'm going to create a save state. If I press R2, I'm going to load my save state. So that's our hotkeys. So hold down menu X takes me to the red torch menu. Hold down menu R1 is going to fast forward. L1 is going to slow down. L2 is going to load a save state. And R2 is going to create a save state. So that's our, our hotkeys. Pretty basic, but I think that pretty much covers everything you would want from hotkeys unless you want something very, very specific. So that's going to be our hotkeys. So, so far we've covered how to pick our games, the game switcher, basically how to come in and out pretty fast and our hotkeys. So what's left now is to actually go into some of the things that we want to adjust in case you had specific preferences. Now, one thing I'm going to show here really quick is that GBA, if you noticed, is in the correct aspect ratio. Now, if I remember correctly, because I have adjusted that, when you first set it up, it's going to be to uh, maintain aspect ratio and I believe integer scaling. Those are some of the things that you might want to adjust if you want to take advantage of the full screen. So we're actually going to get into those right now. If you go over to RetroArch, 
and we go to settings first thing is video so we're going to go to scaling and if and right here you can see i already have uh keep aspect ratio off and integrate scaling off the reason for that is is i want to take advantage of as much of the screen as possible now you might want more accurate pixels so you might want to keep integer scaling on but keep in mind that it is going to make your screen a little bit smaller so that is something to, to consider personally i want to use as much as possible especially on something this size so the next thing you want to do is we're going to go over here to frame throttle and we're going to set our frame total to whatever it is you want it. Now, a lot of these sensors are not going to be able to hit all the way to 4X, but I like to keep it there just for good measure. It's high enough, and that's about as fast as I would want my games to go anyway. And the next thing is rewind. So you want to make sure rewind support is off. Unless a specific game, you really, you really need it to be running there, I would say just keep rewind off. I believe now it is off by default but because it takes a lot of system resources which can really hurt performance so we want to make sure that's off again unless there's a specific platform where you feel like you really need it but it's i would just say try to avoid it as much as possible now the next thing is you might want to have uh your frame showing up on screen so to get that is on screen display on screen notifications notification visibility and then we're just going to turn on display frame rate now, once all those things are set, we're going to go back out here, configuration file, and we're going to save our current configuration. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because I pretty much have things the way I want it. So I'm just going to leave it there. But that's what you would do to save those so that it applies to everything. And that's it. That's really the only things you're going to want to check, except for one other thing that I almost forgot here. And that's video. And that's going to be threaded video. Now, if you have that on, you're going to get better performance on certain games. Um, now, some people say that they don't like the way it looks. It personally never really bothered me. So I just turn it on and just check that. See if it's on or off by default and kind of get a feel for it. Make your own decision, basically. All right. So that's it. That's how we do our setup, our setup on RetroArch. Now, potentially one other thing you might want to do is go into the systems that are going to have a specific aspect ratio. Things like Game Boy. Now, if you notice here, it's booting in the correct aspect ratio for me. And that's because I, I already went and I turned on keep aspect ratio for this core. So the way you would do that is turn that on, go on back, quick menu, and you're going to go ahead and save this as an override. So a core override, that way it's going to save for this entire core. Basically, a core is going to be your emulator. So anything that's running off of this core is going to be kept in that aspect ratio. And that is just something I like to do because I just, I prefer these more specific systems to keep that aspect ratio. So we can do that for Game Boy. And of course, you're going to want to go ahead and check Game Boy Advance 2 and do the exact same thing. So settings video scaling keep aspect ratio that's it really every other system is already going to take advantage of the full four by three screen so those are really the only two you're going to want to do it with now as far as performance on things like game boy game boy advance you don't really have to worry about that a whole lot let me show you something here real quick and i don't there we go so right here you can see 59.57 we're basically going full speed right here and now if i hold it i still have some room to speed up so we don't really have to worry about game boy advanced performance in game boy you can see that the text is completely legible all of those other little issues have already been fixed so so no point in really spending a whole lot of time with game boy advance now, the one we are going to get into, though, is Super Nintendo because there was a, there were a couple hiccups here. So I just want to make sure I cover this. So if we launch something like Yoshi's Island, you can see I'm just under 60 frames. But the game is completely playable. You won't even really notice it, which means that almost every single Super Nintendo game is going to run full speed. Now, for the ones that you can't get full speed on, a solid 60, there is an option you can do that unfortunately isn't currently supported, and that's to use a different core. Now, it's not currently supported from the launcher itself, which means that you're going to have to launch that game from RetroArch, not from your system selection. And that's not a huge deal because it's there's honestly not going to be a whole lot of games that are going to need it, but I'll show you one that will here in a little bit. Because if you can get Yoshi's Island running, then you're pretty much going to be, oh no, come back, come back. There we go. You're pretty much going to be good on all the other games. 
But if you do run across that one game that's just not playing right, here's what we're going to do. So we're going to go into RetroArch and we're going to go to Load Content, MNT, MMC, and this is going to take you to where all your games are at. And now we want to go into SFC because you remember we want to have our um, folder layout the same as the menu mini layout so it's not going to say SNS it's going to say Super Famicom SFC and now we're going to find the game that we want to run in this case I want to run Super Mario RPG so we have a couple cores here we can pick from if I go ahead and run it on a SNES 2002 I'm going to be able to run this game full speed and even speed up let me show you here real quick here you go Take that off so game is running full speed and sorry about the little marks on my console here i've actually been taking this thing everywhere and i haven't been <laughs> exactly kind to it which just goes to show you that this is going to be a pretty sturdy little system so don't worry too much about that but yeah do take very care of yours there we go now in this game we're running full speed now, unfortunately, this core is not going to be the most accurate, so you might have some glitches here and there, but you are going to be able to run this game at full speed. Now, if I was to go ahead and try to launch this, get out of here, from the system launcher over here, you'll see that it just doesn't hit full speed. It's at 46, 45, it's going to fluctuate a little bit, but that's just where it stays at. It just can't get full speed. And that's just because the default emulator that this is running on from the system launcher doesn't run this game full speed. Now, in the future, uh, we might get support for different cores to be picked from the launcher, but at this point, it's just not there. So if you do find that one game that you really want to play that's just not running, go ahead and try launching it from RetroArch and finding a core that it's going to work with now i know that's not ideal but it is going to be a very small number of games and it's just something that we have to do right now because this is a brand new operating system so you do have to be patient things are getting better very very fast but it's not going to be perfect right out of the box so yeah give it a little bit of time but anyway that's going to be super nintendo you saw yoshi's island running so yes pretty much all the games are going to be working and the one game here and there that's just not running all the way you can go through red Rush to get it to launch and run full speed Now the next system we're going to cover is going to be PlayStation and we're going to go right into Crash Bandicoot because when I was showing this game off on RetroArch, we were just not able to get full speed on it and you can see clearly here that it is full speed. No issues with this one. Solid 60 and we can actually even speed this one up. Now. We can also run Bloody Roar, which is also going to run full speed. And this is one of the hardest PlayStation 1 games to emulate. There we go. I'm not sure why the frame counter right there just said, oh man, I'm getting destroyed. 49, but it's, it's running at 60. Uh, sometimes it'll take it a second to really give you the accurate reading. Um, yeah, that was not the best time to come in here. But yeah, this game's also going to run full speed. PlayStation 1 has been fixed. Everything is running full speed, so you don't really have to worry about that one. And for most of these games, you're even going to be able to fast forward. So if there's any RPGs that you really want to play and you have some fast forward there, this is going to be a perfect system for that one, especially because of the size. So even though it is pretty small, it's still very comfortable to use for longer play sessions. So yeah, I'm getting a little too into it. Let's go to something else. Now, arcade support has been added to Garlic OS, but I don't really have a whole lot of arcade games in here. I have showed them running on just Retro Arch, which they will here too. You're gonna be able to launch right into them. Uh, even your vertical games. Unfortunately, some of the vertical games, I have been told that you can't get out of Tate mode, that they just stay in that one no matter what soon as you move. So that is something that might be looked at in the future. I'm not the developer, but I know Black Seraph is gonna be trying to fix as much as he can on this, but just be patient. He's already done so much for this system system and it's only going to keep on improving so unfortunately i'm not really going to show arcade on this video just because i really don't play a whole lot of arcade um i've said it before i'm not an arcade guy so i'm sorry on that one 
But yes, they do run. If somebody really wants to see it, you can go ahead and check out my other video, the Re just retro arch video, and see the arcade games running. They're right there. You can configure the buttons for when you're playing in vertical mode. What I was doing is just using the D-pad and uh, A and B over here as my buttons. You can also use L1, L2. That's your buttons over here. It's just going to be a comfort thing, what you prefer. But yes, arcade is doable in the system. I just, uh, I didn't really load it up on my SD card because I know I'm not going to be playing that. Yeah, that is the video. That is Garlic OS. I think it's an awesome addition to the 35XX because it just gets out of the way and lets you play. You can clearly see this, the heavy Onion OS inspiration. And I think that's a good thing because everybody loves Onion OS on their Mega Mini. Why not have a similar experience on another system that's kind of going after a similar market? Now, I don't want to say this is a direct competitor to Mega Mini because it's not a mini console. It's a small handheld, sure. But there is a difference in size. And you can see that right here. That... It's not a huge handheld. You can still play one-handed on this, or at least I can, and it's pretty comfortable for that. But unlike the Mini, I find you can also grab this with two hands, and it's still pretty comfortable because it's roughly the same size as the 353V, just without the analog sticks on the bottom. But yeah, this is a very comfortable little handheld. But anyway, this is about Garlic OS. Yes, Garlic OS is awesome. At this point, there really isn't a whole lot of reasons to stay on this uh, stock firmware unless you just really like the simplicity of that one, just the pick up and go nature of it. But really, I think this offers similar experience as far as ease of use while still giving you all those other options that we can come accustomed to with our, with our retro handhelds. So I really hope if you were on the fence about whether or not you want to load Garlic OS on, on your system that this video helped clear things up a little bit for you. I hope it helped you. Keep in mind this is still early stages so it's only going to get better but even at this point I, I think this is definitely the way to go. If this video helped you, don't forget to like the video, share with somebody that you think might benefit from Garlic OS on their system and thanks for watching.